and welcome to the Sailing My Magic channel. My name is Duke and I am Solo Sailing Magic, my 2015 Lagoon Catamaran, around the world. If you want to go somewhere on a boat, you don't aim to where you want to go, you aim somewhere else entirely. And then you sail in a curve or a zigzag or some other course and it gets you there eventually. One of the other things I needed to do was to get my depth finder uh, repaired. And if you see there, the 25, that's showing the depth of where I was at that moment. Okay, the best thing is that almost every marina has a book swap um, somewhere. And you know, take a book in, drop a book off. And most um, chandleries, that is marines parts stores, restaurants, things like that, they often have them. So you have a good range of uh, books to choose from. I was leaving Russell for the final time. It was very calm out. The water was flat and glassy, but you can see over at the uh, side here, there's a storm coming in, the quiet before the storm. The storm did come in while I was on my way back to Opua. Opua is the checkout spot from New Zealand, from the North Island. The rain did start falling pretty heavy, but uh, fortunately it was short lived. And once it started drying out enough, I got out the generator to charge my batteries before my appointment. To make an appointment with the New Zealand Customs Service before you can depart New Zealand. Uh, their form is five pages long, but then again, the advance notice of arrival for Fiji is 13 pages long. It takes a little while to get this done. Uh, they have a nice office here, kind of looks like an interrogation room where you meet, but still, it's a nice place. When you leave New Zealand, the customs office gives you a very nice pen. It's got a wooden barrel. And the reason they do it is it's got the numbers and contact information. If you break down and have to come back to uh, New Zealand after you've departed, you have to tell them before you get there or it's a really big fine. When all that was done, I could depart the Bay of Islands Marina in Opua and start on my journey. The water settled down again. Now note the Bay of Islands is a big bay and does contain many islands. You have to sail past them. But I love to see the water as the boat is cutting through a flat surface like that. You can hear the water uh, gurgling by. And there's one of the last uh, islands that I need to go past to get out of the Bay of Islands. You run kind of a uh, big C shape to go from Okua out towards the open ocean. And here I'm heading towards the open ocean, so the waves are starting to come in a little bit more. Leaving New Zealand behind me, and the wind finally shifts around to come at the right angle. Sunset on day one. It was a full moon on that first night, and I very much appreciated that. My night vision is pretty good, and I could see if there were any ships or anything, even if they had no lights on. I love the full moon. So this is the morning of the second day, heading to Fiji. Uh, the weather has cleared up quite a bit. I'm heading north, which will get warmer because I was very much south of the equator. I've been going um, about five knots for the last night and most of this day. Wind speed has been about 15 knots, which means the waves aren't big. It's been kind of choppy. I get getting uh, waves from different directions, but they're small enough that it's really not a problem. The forecast is to have winds of about 15 knots for most of the way. And that's fine because it will give me an opportunity to run my generator some more. I didn't get a full charge when I left. And here I've flaked out the coils so that they don't cause a fire. But it's beautiful uh, weather along the way. And I can just cruise in the soft swells and small waves. The uh, wind is being consistent, which is a joy. I got a new fishing rod while I was in New Zealand, and I'm excited to see how it works out. It's a shorter, stiffer rod with a bigger reel on it, and I'm trailing it behind me to see if I can catch some sort of pelagic fish. I really do prefer sailing in the deep blue sea and the stiffer winds of the open ocean. I took the uh, fishing rod in. Uh, it was out all day and all about half the night and still nothing on it. Some parts of the ocean are like a desert 
you have to hit either a current or something near some object for the fish to gather around. The moon behind some clouds on the night of the second day. Okay, it's about 12.30 at night. The wind is blowing about 18 knots. I'm traveling between six and seven knots. The waves have died down a little bit, so I'm going along smoothly. Please click on the subscribe button if you haven't already, and please click on the like button. It's totally free and it really does help me. Morning of the third day. It rained a little bit last night and it looks like I'm going to have a little bit more rain this morning. I ran into that storm and the winds jumped up to over 30 knots. It seemed like a couple of jets coming out of the back of the two sterns. I had the sails set to handle winds up to 25 knots. When the wind gusted up and started going 22 knots and above, I had to set another reef, this time in the head sail. So I've got one reef in the main sail, one reef in the head sail, so I can handle up to 30 knots now. The third night. It's pre-dawn on the fourth day and it's getting warmer. I started out wearing four layers of clothes and now I'm down to three layers of clothes. Pretty much a storm in every direction. My solar cells are now fully charged, even though that's the first time in months. I'm now at a point where tomorrow I'll be halfway there and everything is going fine. I have a beautiful sunset on the end of the fourth day. I had a beautiful view of the moonlight reflecting on the ocean. I wish the video camera could capture the detail for all of you to see. At the beginning of this video, I said that for sailing, you don't aim where you want to go, you aim somewhere else. This is a good example. I'm wanting to go almost due north, and I'm going almost due east. You can see from this gauge in the bottom right hand corner that the wind has dropped down to five knots and the wind is coming in from behind me which is a bad angle and that's why I needed to turn east to um, accommodate that but that gave me a boat speed of only 2.4 knots which is really slow. I have a beautiful sunrise on the morning of day five. Yesterday and last night the wind died way down so that means there's very little energy to move the boat. I'm only going at a couple of knots and it's gonna make the journey take a little longer. But it was also indicated that if I got far enough north that I would catch some stronger winds again. Got something on the line. It's running the reel out. A big sunset. 12.30 a.m. so I guess I'm in the morning of the sixth day and finally picked up some wind. There's a good storm going on. Bouncing around a little bit but I'm making real progress now. The big storm is now blowing right in front of me. I was heading north and this AIS signal popped up in front of me. It's marked as other so it's probably not a fishing boat and it popped up very close to me, so that means it's probably something low. I was looking at my speed there, I was going 19 knots, so very fast, and another AIS signal popped up. Again, it was marked other, and it was very low. I love to see the bows cutting neatly through the water. Then another one of the AIS fishing buoys popped up, and I had to go even farther east. That's not something I want to get tangled with. Night fell very quickly. And then about two o'clock in the morning, a boat came by, a cargo ship named Industrial Swift. It never got closer than about 13 miles away from me. And this is the first boat I've seen in 10 days, so it gives you an idea how big the Pacific actually is. Quite a few storms over this direction. You can see the rain streaking down to the ocean. At this point, I have about 400 miles to go. The wind has been staying at 30 knots all morning. I got really big waves, um, spinning the boat back and forth. It's 
so I had that storm that I hit basically from about 400 miles away from Fiji onward and started off 25 to 30 knots which is fine then started going up and up going up to 40 knots uh, the waves got a lot worse too I was trying to uh, reef in the sails make them smaller so they wouldn't pull so hard not as much power in them and the furling line on the head sail broke in the middle so I was out in the middle of the storm out on the trampoline uh, trying to run a new line through there which I did unfortunately I couldn't see the way the drum was before so I wound the line the wrong direction it works but the, the sunbrella protection strip is on the wrong side now so I got to take that apart when I get somewhere but uh, the whole thing I was trying to do was slow this down to about four knots. Uh, several big ones hit me and knocked me around. One of them knocked me so that my chin hit the uh, cross brace and that hit me harder than any fight I've ever been in my life. So it was pretty hard. The waves coming from three different directions caused the boat to twist back and forth violently. And some of the screws came out some of the stainless steel welds didn't hold. Uh, some of the stainless steel poles bent. And it caused the bimini top to fall down in three stages, um, breaking up some of the uh, fiberglass uh, gel coat. But even with that, I still had to get the uh, uh, fenders out. But the bimini was about uh, halfway down to the waist and uh, shattered my plot charter. I had to navigate in using my cell phone, but finally there was a beautiful sky in Fiji. It's a very pretty marina with a beautiful little restaurant here. <laughs> Safe and sound while I play the traditional Fijian drum. <laughs> <laughs> 